received chemo number three of AC, the Red Devil, two weeks ago, and I'm just getting to a video because my life has gone chaotic. Our daycare closed down due to COVID and the uh, Delta variant, I believe. So therefore, we were forced to have the kids at home. I watched them with my parents, which was very, very nice. I know I couldn't have done it because I was still really weak from chemo number three. And so that's what's been taking over my life. But I do have some notes about chemo number three and what's happened physically and mentally speaking. Physically speaking, this was by far my hardest chemo treatment. I was not expecting myself to be that sick for that long. Day three of uh, after receiving chemo was very hard. I was nauseous the worst I've ever been despite working out that morning and eating really healthy and drinking green juice every morning it really didn't help me at all I was so nauseous that just looking at food made me want to throw up so it's really hard this time also noticing that my body is not the way it was granted I am going through chemo but there are things that I've noticed when I fall asleep at night, I'll wake up coughing or I can't fall asleep. The back of my head is very tender and it spasms quite a bit. And I've noticed on my fingernail beds, I'm gonna see if this works, but basically they are turning black. I'm not sure if you can see that, but yes, they're turning black. And right now I only have it on three fingers out of 10, but I'm assuming more will be following suit. Kind of worry that that means my fingernails might be falling off. I know that's a side effect for chemo patients on Taxol, but I didn't know that for AC. So I will be monitoring this for a while. What else I've noticed is that when I do get to eat, when I can stomach something, it's typically something that I shouldn't be eating like cheeseburgers. I had it once. <laughs> I also really like fruit, something really sugary, which is what I'm trying to stay away from. And so it's been kind of hard because the body, I, I can't control what my body is craving. So whatever I can eat, I eat at this point. I also had my first migraine in over a year. I am notorious for getting lots of migraines and uh, before I had children, that was just my way of life. I found my triggers, but nowadays I'm not really sure what my triggers are. Maybe it's the lack of sleep. But, but basically, when I do receive a migraine, it starts as a visual disturbance, and it's really small, and it gets larger and larger and larger, and then basically takes over my whole vision. Then I can't see, and the pain comes in. So I usually take simitriptyline for that, and I didn't know if I could. So. I've scheduled my appointment with the neurologist that specializes in migraines. I haven't seen her over a year, so I know I'm due for a visit. Other than that, I think mentally it's been really hard to stay positive just because of the daycare closure due to COVID as well as the fact that my body is falling apart as I, as I speak. My daughter is also hypersensitive to when I'm in bed and when I'm not in bed. It's really, really sweet to hear a three-year-old say, Mommy, are you okay? Are you okay? And uh, she's just been so sweet when I am when I am sick and thankfully a little understanding as much as a three-year-old can. And then the days that when I don't appear sick, I think it, for her, she thinks I'm all better. But truthfully speaking, it is... I've noticed a big change, you know, going up the stairs takes a lot of effort. I have to take a break after I'm at the top of the stairs to breathe and to make sure my vision is stable. I feel like I'm a grandmother <laughs> just because of what is going on with my body and mentally speaking, I'm not as strong as some people might think so it, it has been really hard this time around i know i still have quite a bit more to go through chemo wise i still have 12 more treatments of taxol and 
one more of AC. I'm supposed to get AC tomorrow, so hopefully I finish that with a bang. I'm also visiting the doctor again this week due to another ultrasound to make sure that the tumor has decreased. Last time we did the ultrasound, it decreased by 15%, which is good, but I think they want it to go down quite a bit more. So uh, this next ultrasound will determine whether or not my next treatment plan will continue with Taxol 12 more times or if it will be Taxol plus something like Carpo, I believe. Uh, also been listening to people and reading about the new FDA approved drug called Keytruda. Uh, it's using immunotherapy. So wondering if I can also uh, receive that as well. I think it'll be really hard, but at least if I can do what I can to make sure that it doesn't, the cancer cells don't uh, reoccur again, I will sign up for it, anything. <laughs> so that's what's gonna happen this week. Hoping that uh, daycare opens and my kids can go back as well as I also meet with the surgical oncologist this week. I haven't seen her in about over two months. Hoping that she can give some clarity on the questions I've had, whether I get a vasectomy or lumpectomy, if I get it on both breasts or one. My fear is that if I take out the breast tissue and if it were to reoccur and have a reoccurrence, would it hit the bone straight? Because then you go straight from stage you know, one, two, three to all the way four very quickly. And there's no warning sign. So I'm a little scared about that. I thought I'd be really excited for a, a possible boob job, but I, I actually am kind of scared about it and rethinking my thoughts. So if you've gone through uh, any implant surgery, reconstructive, anything down that path, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you just because there's a lot of questions and and uh, confusion in my mind right now so anything that could appease that would be greatly appreciated and as always hope you guys have another great week and see you guys next time